I don't know how this show gonna go today, man, because usually I'm a bacon and eggs, full breakfast type of person in the morning. Wifey got me together, but this morning I'm on some one hash brown, one sausage. I'm running on E right now. We just moved into the new apartment yesterday, so I'm not sure how this show is gonna go. It's about to get crazy, but let's get down to business. Yes, sir. Time to talk that real ish. Shot clock, buzzer beaters, boy, you gon' feel this. From banging on the block to step backs. Dish it if you could try. Finish this like a read. Fade away like Kawhi. It's the NBA, man. I love this game. And if you a hooper, then you probably feel the same. Barbershop talk mixed with some analytics. The best of seven sports talk, homie, get with us. Straight barbershop talk mixed with analytics. The best of seven sports talk, homie, get with us. From LeBron to KD to Dame Time, the best of seven is up next. Game time. Everybody know, man. Good morning, man. Welcome back, all the NBA junkies, to the best of seven sports talk. Seven Mitchell preachers in the building. Happy Friday, October 22nd, 2021, man. We got a couple things to talk about this morning. Not going to hold everybody up too much. First week of the NBA season. It's almost officially done. We got to talk about some things that happened in opening night. Also, the 75th anniversary team was announced yesterday in its entirety. We got a couple players that were snubbed from the team, making a lot of noise. We got Ben Simmons talk, of course. We got uh, Kawhi Leonard making some headlines this week. And more importantly, we're going to start this thing off with Paul Pierce hating on LeBron yet again. About to get into this thing. Preach, what's happening, G? What's good, man? Happy we made it, man. Friday, we weekend is upon yeah. us. Time to get into I'm getting it. sick of Paul Pierce, man. Oh, my God. <laughs> so let's get into this story real quick, man, with Paul Pierce hating on LeBron and the Lakers. So there was a show on Showtime. Uh, I forgot the actual name of the show. I believe it's called What's Burning, a, sh- a basketball show on Showtime that featured Paul Pierce, Matt Barnes, and Steven Jackson from Up in Smoke. They was discussing some of the moves that were made in the offseason by the NBA. And Steven Jackson had took note that he was happy to see Carmelo get a chance to play with LeBron and a couple of the other guys. And um, Paul Pierce, his opinion was this Lakers team looked washed up like that 2003-2004 Lakers team that featured Carl Malone yeah. and Gary Payton. What's your thoughts on Paul Pierce, man? I mean, this guy has had it for LeBron for the beginning of time. He still finds way to take shots, even though he's really not a factor at this point. What's your thoughts on uh, Paul Pierce, and does he actually have a point with his argument? So, so I didn't see the interview that he gave. I, I need to go back and look. But Paul Pierce has been at this for a long, long time with LeBron, man. And it's pretty much come down to how LeBron used to just dominate this guy, man. And they were their rivals, so it, so you expect it. So I don't I don't know what why Paul Pierce just won't give it up. He's not in the game anymore. Even uh, in the losses, I, even when when LeBron took losses to Boston and Cleveland, he was still yeah. giving Paul Pierce the business. Yeah, right, man. Right. I mean, you the last time he faced the Boston three big three by itself you know he averaged a triple double in that series so let's not forget lebron james ran paul pierce out of boston ran him out of brooklyn yeah you know what i mean ran him out of the league basically ran him to the west Yeah, he couldn't keep up yeah you know so it's predictable that paul pierce will find some way somehow to keep um lebron's name in his mouth I let the fans know maybe a week ago, Paul Pierce and Kevin Garnett, they are actually doing a podcast together that's going to be coming out soon. So you can imagine the hate that's going to be coming from that show when it comes to LeBron James. Mostly from Paul Pierce, though. Garnett, he's he's pretty humble about where he stands in the NBA and, you know, the greats, where they stand as well. So I think he gives LeBron his props where props is due. But Paul Pierce just... If you ask him who the best small forward to ever play the game, he might he just name him. himself. He's going to name himself all yeah. day, every day. Yeah. Um, what do you think about the first week, man? We had the Lakers lose to Golden State. Did you see Steph last night versus the Clippers? 
man, I saw it. And uh, what I want to tell everybody is don't don't sleep on Golden State, man. Like oh my God. their motto, their motto is strength in numbers. And if you look how deep this team is um, and we think back on a 2016 team when their motto was actually strength in numbers, this team is just as deep. And they don't even have Wiseman, Kaminga, or Clay Thompson in a lineup. Imagine when they get back, you you are literally going to have to outshoot this team, and not a not a lot of teams in the league can do that. So, they are going to win a lot of games. <laughs> they are going to beat a lot of teams because you have to outshoot Clay, Curry, Kaminga, Poole, uh, Iguodala, still giving you a three every now and then. Like these Andrew guys is playing good shoot. basketball. Andrew Wiggins, like these guys can shoot and they will shoot you out of games. So be ready for Golden State. They are back. My only concern with Golden State is just that number one, even though Clay has been gone for a while, do we give him time to get back on his feet? Like when he comes back into the game, will he be immediately the Clay Thompson that we've seen before? Will he ever be the Clay Thompson that we've seen before? One thing about Golden State to me, I do agree. They're definitely going to be a threat moving forward um, in the regular season and in the postseason possibly. But it sounds crazy, but I don't take Golden State really serious because of the lack of offensive skill set that has been taken from Draymond Green. Like he's, you remember when they won that championship back in 2015 and even through the 2016 run, where they went 73 and 9, Draymond would give you 20, 25 points. Right. You know, on offense. We're, see, not, we're not getting that anymore. And my issue is that there's nothing on the defensive end. He's not, he's always been a good defender, but he's not right. leveling up even more defensively. And you right. know, we don't have that offensive presence. So I don't know what Golden State is going to do for the simple fact that how much time are they going to give Clay to return? Andrew Wiggins, he's playing great right now, but how consistent can he be? We're seeing flashes of uh, Jordan Poole. Uh, Wiseman, he's not been playing yet. So there's still some questions, what, but I still feel like Golden State could definitely be a threat in the West. What, what Draymond does to that team does not have to show up on the stat sheet, my brother. And I, I want to tell you guys this. Uh, Curry, he's re he realizes that he just needs to just shoot the ball, man. Like, forget everybody else, just shoot. You see what he did last night. Like, I would literally let this man shoot 100 of the shots, and he may make 60 of them, 80 of them. That's Curry. Let him shoot. He's the greatest shooter to ever play the sport. For them and to beat both LA teams to start the season off, not to cut you off, yeah. for them to beat the Lakers and the Clippers, you know, even though the Clippers wasn't fully man, Kawhi's not playing, but yeah. they were down. They had to come back last night. They're they going to beat a lot of teams, man. I'm telling you, Curry, this is a different Curry. Like, he – He's not going to defer to any guys. Like, if they make it to the playoffs, it's going to be because of Curry. If they win the finals, it's going to be because of Curry. He's going to get – he may get MVP, and if they win the finals, he's going to get finals MVP this time. This is a different Curry, man. This is this is killer Curry right here. Right. I want people to know this is killer mode Curry. So, be ready. Now, we about three games in almost just about for the NBA regular season. How um, excited have you been? What have you seen so far that have stood out to you, Preach, when it comes to some of the basketball that we done saw? Man, just the uh, transition and where the game is going. All these young guys, Ja Morant, um, Trey Young, Jalen Brown, like these young guys are stepping up, man. They, they showing you that the league is going to be in good hands when Durant, Curry, and LeBron leaves. Like, don't worry. The NBA is going to be in perfect hands because – Luca, Trey Young, Ja Morant, Zion, you know, all these young cats are here. Yeah, Jason Tatum. It's a couple of these guys. Jason Tatum. Yeah. Jason Tatum had he had an off game, but that's that's game one. I, I don't I don't I'm not gonna seep into that. But Jalen Brown, man. <laughs> Shout out to Jalen Brown. He put on and he 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 made a case that he may be the best the best Celtic. Like people forgetting he was a number four pick, number three, number four pick. Jalen. He was still a top. Yeah, Jalen Brown, he was still a top pick. I think he was number three. I think he was number three right before Tatum. Jalen is a great two way to, a great two way defender, man. Good perimeter defender. Oh yeah, man. He can he can do a lot for your team. Yeah, absolutely. He can do a lot. Now they lost to the New York Knicks, man. That was a great game, the opening in the uh, yeah. the opening night. The NBA, they fined Julius Randle fifteen thousand dollars for throwing the get the ball into the stands after the Knicks uh found a way to get that win. 
He threw the ball at the, the guard end of the Knicks back, double man. overtime. But it seems like they back at it. What was your thoughts on the Knicks win? Man, I knew that Evan Fournier pick was going to be big for them. Uh, you put a sharpshooter in that lineup, a guy who can score with Randall, and you, you know you get that more space. And Mitchell Robinson is healthy. You see him; he's he's really a healthy, uh, athletic DeAndre Ayton. And people going to see how how great this New York New York Knicks team is, man. They they going to be pretty pretty solid. Preach, what's your thoughts on Russell Westbrook, man? The Lakers took a loss to Golden State to start the season off. LeBron looked pretty good um, starting the year off. But, Le you know, Russell really struggled shooting the ball. He looked like he was nervous. What's your thoughts on uh, Russell Westbrook as far as the first game? Do you think this will be a consistent behavior? And what type of moves do the Lakers need to make in order to get this thing done sooner than later? I wouldn't, I wouldn't panic so fast. Like, yeah, yeah, they lost to Golden State, but again, that Golden State team is 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 a sleeper. And Westbrook, you know, he's back home. He's in L.A. He's getting comfortable. You know, he has family, friends, you know, old teachers and stuff probably hitting him up, asking for tickets. He probably just has a lot going on. And with, within that offense, he still has to find himself. He has to know that LeBron can't be the fastest guy on transition. You, Russell Westbrook, have to still play your game, be that guy. And but they they played three quarter three good quarters of basketball. People are forgetting like they were up by a lot during the third. It was that fourth that was really bad for them. So they played three good quarters of basketball. I wouldn't panic so fast, man. I think they had a lot of schemes going for Westbrook, and they they can continue to run them. They'll they'll be fine. They'll be fine. Yeah, I wouldn't hit the panic button just yet. But what I think was solidified is that this thing is going to take time. It's going to take more time than normal for this thing to definitely gel because. They talked about LeBron and AD after the game. They really wanted to, you know, show Russell that it was just one game. They want Russell to be Russell. But Russell Westbrook being Russell Westbrook does not work in the L.A. uniform it's, to me. It's not. It's not. And what I would do if I was Rob Palenka, I – first of all, I would have never went for Russell Westbrook. Like, that Buddy Hill trade should – that that trade should have been your first number one priority because putting a sharpshooter of that magnitude next to LeBron like that, that would have been next level. That would have literally been a, the best sharpshooter LeBron's probably ever played with in his prime. So that was a mistake on Rob Palenka's part. He should have pulled that plug on uh, Kuzma and just traded him straight up or something for Buddy Hill. It's still not too late, but um, the Westbrook – the Westbrook piece is, is still kind of iffy for me because I think LeBron is one of the best playmakers in the game. Let him run the offense right. because not not only will he run it to at a proficient level, but he knows and he proves how to you know he proved how to win games. Like he's been a, he's been a, a more finals than anyone in this in this uh in current NBA. Fair, so it's like I yeah. watch Russell Westbrook in Houston. And I watched how he tried to take a back seat to James Harden, knowing that was his team. And I watched how Russell Westbrook went to Washington, knowing that was Bradley Beal's team, and he kind of took a back seat. I'm willing to say that Russell Westbrook would take a back seat because he's never been the third best player on any team he's ever played for. So I'm, I'm willing to, to bet that he's willing to fall back, playing with LeBron and them, and not shoot as much. But the problem is, if he's not going to be as elite offensively, what else is he going to do stepping up to help these guys out? Because he may not shoot the ball, but just bringing the ball up the floor, he is turning the ball over so many times at an unbelievable rate. It's not giving these guys a chance to stay in games. And there's only been one, but we've seen the, the, the turnover issue during the preseason. So if he's not going to shoot the ball, and if he can't keep the ball, what relevance or what good is he going to be, especially starting at a point guard? What what he did in game one was he hounded the, the hell out of Steph Curry. Like he put he played great D on him. What I would do is run him with the second unit. He has to realize like, hey, in order for us to win, in order for us you for you to solidify your place on this team, we need you to run with the second unit. That way he can run and gun with those guys, spot, uh, set up the offense the way he wants to, you know, crash boards the way he wants to, and just let him run that show. I would that's what I would do. A Westbrook with the second unit, you can't you can't lose with that. But Frankie V got to know that preach. 
Fr- Frankie V yeah. and and everyone in LA knows that the way it looks, Russell, maybe even Carmelo, both will be more effective um, in the second unit. The problem is number one, how are you going to carry this? Are you going to literally start Rajon Rondo over Russell in order to get Russell, you know, playing with the second unit, or are you going to have Russell starting and play games with his minutes? getting him out earlier, you know, than normal, just so he can get back and run with the second unit. I don't know how Frankie V is going to pull this off, but it's like you said, it's a hundred percent fact. He's going to be more effective playing with some of the players that's on the bench starting these games off than playing with LeBron and AD. If he cannot figure out how to, you know, get it in. Right. And I think for me, I think, uh, uh, a good rotation would be to start Avery Bradley at the point when Wayne Ellington comes back, LeBron, Melo, and AD. That's what I would go with. So you'll start Avery over Rondo? I mean, at the at, uh, let LeBron run point, man. Yeah. I would do that. I want to see LeBron transition to more magic. I, I know the reason why they have all these point guards is because LeBron is, is chasing Kareem right now. He wants that scoring type. But we trying to win games. He's trying to win a ring. LeBron needs to run that needs to run the Lakers. If they want to be the Showtime Lakers again, right. they need a magic. And nobody can do it better than LeBron. He's the best playmaker on that team. Shaquille O'Neal was in the news earlier this week. He has said that if LeBron James did surpass – Kareem Abdul-Jabbar is the number one scorer all time with the four rings that he got that puts him as the GOAT. LeBron is already the GOAT, man. (laughs) People need to stop stop sleeping on that. LeBron is already the GOAT. The only person that could take that title from him is either KD or Giannis, but LeBron is definitely the GOAT. Speaking of Giannis, man, what did you think about Giannis and the Bucks? You know, they got their rings. They got their banner raised. They had to play Brooklyn in the first game, man. Giannis was sharp in game one. What do you think about Milwaukee versus Brooklyn? And then last night, I told you I got yeah. Miami going to the finals. We talked about the Heat. They got busy. Yeah, we did. We did. I want to say that um, it just shows you, man, that Milwaukee can beat Brooklyn, but they can't beat. It's, it just seems like they, they're not going to be able to beat Miami, especially in a, in a blowout like that, man. So it's, it's different matchups because that Brooklyn team will probably give Miami hell, but they can't mm-hmm. give, you know, Milwaukee hell. You see how it went. Right. It's different right. matchups, man. It's, uh, I, I, I definitely uh, wouldn't still wouldn't sleep on Milwaukee, though. It was just a game. And, you know, Miami's first unit came out. They came out pretty solid, and Tyler Hero put on a hell of a game. A potential six-man of the year if he keeps that up. Giannis is showing a lot of confidence, but he still needs to work on that jump shot. You know what I mean? He's still right, he's right. a champion. Yeah. Everybody's proclaiming Giannis to be the best player in the world. He's definitely playing with confidence more than he's had before, but he's still got to work on that jump shot because he didn't have that great um, of a shooting night uh, against Brooklyn, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. Um... He definitely got to get that going, man. I th- I thought it was there. I thought he was working on it more during the off season, but he's still going to be the same Giannis. And I mean, that's still good enough, though, honestly. So right. Giannis is going to do Giannis things. When we come back here on the Best of Seven Sports Talk, Seven Mitchell and Preach, we're going to talk about Kawhi Leonard in the news, making some big news for his brand, making some big moves. For his brand, we're going to talk about Kawhi when we come back. Also, the NBA 75th anniversary team was announced in its entirety yesterday. Some key players was named off of the list. We're going to talk about that and a couple other things here on the Best of Seven Sports Talk when we get back. Don't go nowhere. Cleveland Cavaliers select LeBron James. Denver Nuggets select Carmelo Anthony. We're both going into our 19th season. I mean, that's that's very, there's not too many people that can say that. All right, man, we are back. This is the Best of Seven Sports Talk. Kawhi Leonard, Preach, I don't know if this went over your radar or not, but Kawhi Leonard, he released a music, a rap album today. Oh, wow, yeah, I didn't, I didn't catch that one, man. I, 
You go ahead and tell us what that's about, man. Yeah, Kawhi has had a busy week. He released the energy drink earlier this week um, in stores. It's called X2, but he also dropped an album today, a release today called um, Culture Jam, Volume 1, Part 1. Now, when I heard this, I'm sitting wondering myself now. I know Kawhi is not playing, but what the hell is they talking about Kawhi doing a rap album? He doesn't even talk. I know we saw him in yeah. the Drake video. I said, but what the hell is going on here? I got to talk to the bosses. But, you know, I looked at into it, and it's basically a compilation mixtape where he have different artists doing songs. But I guess he's hosting it. It's his album. It looks pretty dope. Seven tracks. He got NBA Youngboy on it, uh, Polo G, Gunner, Lil Uzi Vert, A Boogie's on it, uh, Wale, Todd Dollars, also NLE Chopper from the uh, 50 Cent uh, Power Raising Canaan intro song. So it's some pretty heavy hitters, um, young stars that are on this album. Kawhi Leonard is released today. I haven't heard any of the music, but it is dropping today. And like I said earlier this week, he had his own energy drink um, release. So Kawhi is making some big moves for his brand. I still feel like in order for Kawhi to make it to another level, he's going to have to win a championship in L.A. just like the expectations was for LeBron. He won't. I, I don't think so either. But I, I don't I can't put him nothing that he's gonna do outside of the of that is gonna elevate him as far as stature and legacy to me. He's done some great right. things, but he's gonna have to win a championship in LA. Like all these little power moves that he's doing for his brand, that's not in my eyes gonna make me look at him as more of a great player or an entity. Right. We're gonna right. go away from him. Gotta hit I him. don't even think he's yeah, I didn't think his personality allowed him to be a rapper, man. So yeah, when you I, said I, that, I, I was I, like, what? It bugged me out. It bugged me out. I'm like, Kawhi with a damn rap album, but it's out now. You're going to check it out. Seven tracks again. It's called Culture Jams, Volume 1, Part 1. Shout out to Kawhi Leonard and the moves that he's making. The NBA 75th anniversary, you know, we locked in. They announced their team in its entirety yesterday, and some key names was left off of this list of the top 75. I'm just going to throw these names out there, preaching. You let me know what you think about it. Most notably, Kyrie Irving was left off of the NBA. I'm mad at that. I'm not going to lie. No pun intended. I feel like the NBA is sticking the needle to Kyrie Irving. No pun intended, but it seemed like they're really sticking the needle. I'm mad. To Kyrie. I'm mad at the list because they cater to these legends, and I know they don't want to disrespect these legends. But if we put them next to each other. All in a draft pool, no skill by skill. No competition. Kyrie, you Kyrie is the most like it does not get more skillful. You're not going to find a more skillful basketball player than Kyrie. Talking about raw skill, this had this guy has the handle, the finish. He can shoot. I mean, yeah, he may lack it on defense sometimes, but when Kyrie wants to lock down on defense, he will play defense. But as far as offense. It does not get more skilled than Kyrie. I'm sorry. Kyrie hosted uh, the Larry O'Brien Trophy. Kyrie is a damn champion. How they got Damian Lillard, shout out to Damian Lillard, but how they got Damian Lillard over Kyrie Irving is beyond me. I, I think Dame deserves to be in it too. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna knock him with that. What they, what the, the problem is they're, they're catering to all these legends that came before them. So if you remember the top fifty. They didn't really – a lot of those players that were in the top 50 should not even be in the 75. I'm just being honest with you. Because it was based yeah, on of name and popularity. It wasn't all because – Yeah, their names and what, they, and, what they've, and what they've done for the game, that's why they're, in, that's why they're here is because of how they paved the way. But if we're talking just the best players, like let's think about the best players and just skill and talent-wise, a lot of those players should not be there. Well, let me throw some other that's, names that's, out there that was left off. Grant Hill was left off of the top 75. You agree or disagree? So to make the top 75, it would seem that you would have to be top 15 at your position. So Grant Hill, top 15, small forward, I think he should have been in it. He would be in my top 15 small forwards. I think we just got to go back, look at the numbers when it comes to Grant, because I think potential-wise, there really should be a question. There was a point where people were saying Grant was going to be the next best player in the league, but those injuries got Yeah, before, before he got hurt, yeah. But, um, so I think 
I think the list is made off of accolades, the impact on the sport more so of raw skill and actual talent. Because I don't think I know no disrespect, but Clyde Drexler, those some of those guys in the nineties, they just weren't they you're just not gonna take them over a, a James Harden today or a, a Zach Levine, a Devin Booker, like just some of those guys, they just don't have the talent that these guys possess today. That's 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 my take on it. What do you think about Dwight Howard not making it? Also, the cousins, Vince Carter, Tracy McGrady, they also didn't make it. The Kimbe Mutombo, Penny Hardaway, he didn't make it. Bernard King didn't make it either. Clay yeah, Thompson, uh, Clay Thompson was also a big name that did not make the NBA top seventy-five. Like I said, man, they they want to get these guys that played in the sixties and the seventies in, thinking that they can outball these guys in today's game. That's why they didn't make the top five. I think they James they just pay so. It. Yeah, yeah, James Hardy, he has to make it. But they pay so much respect to those guys that you know paved the way. Well, wait, 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 man, preach! I gotta talk to the bosses. Why, why does James Harden have to make it, but Kyrie and and Clay don't? And those because they he's proof. But he proved that he can carry it. Those guys haven't proved that they can carry a team by themselves. James Harden proved that he can, he can do that. He can get your team to the postseason. He can be the number one option on the team. He can make a system work up into the playoffs. Okay. Clay Thompson. Okay. Clay Thompson hasn't ran an organization by himself being a number one. Never had that. Kyrie one. has. Kyrie had he 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 kind of did it in Boston, but he was you know he was kind of missing games and wasn't there all the time yeah, they, for them. That Boston run, they did that without Kyrie. Um, he had Yeah, they did that without Kyrie. They did that more without Kyrie. In Cleveland and he didn't get it done. So you make yeah, a good point. Exactly. You make a good exactly. point, James. I just think that people would have to define Curry and the team because when you look at it on face value, when someone says Curry and the team, you would think that means that they would take him to the championship round, if not the championship as a whole. But if we are defining... Right, and I... If we're defining it by just I, taking him to the postseason, um, right? James Harden has been, and I think that's it. why Clay got snubbed because, yeah, we know what Clay can do, but you know, can you do that on with you being a number one option on the team? You know, I think that's why he got snubbed. Which don't get me wrong, I think if they if Clay was asked to more, I think he can do more, but Golden State don't require that of him, so he doesn't have to do it. Right, I agree. I agree, hundred percent. But if you ask him, is, is Clay better than a lot of those shooting guards on the list? Hell yes, man. I would take Clay over a lot of shooting guards. I'm excited, man. Like I told you, it seemed like it was the first day of school the other day when you and I had talked about, you know, the opening night of the NBA, man. We've got some great games to start the week off. We've got some thrillers, some double overtime games. We've seen some, you know, we got some crazy stories going down in the league. Ben Simmons. You know, a return one foot in, one foot out of Philly. He did just announce that he's not prepared to play tonight's game with um, Philly. So he's not going to be suited up. I mean, he's not going to be playing. I know that much. We're going to talk about uh, a little bit more what's going on with Ben Simmons and the Sixers on our next show. Salute to everybody. We hope you guys have a good weekend. We're about to wrap this thing up. Um couple games going on tonight. I think the Lakers' second game is tonight. We got a full plate when it comes to the NBA tonight. So there's definitely going to be plenty to chop it up with over the weekend. So preaching myself, we will get back at you all here at the Best of Seven Sports Talk. We hope you guys have a great weekend. Enjoy these games. Stay safe. Preach, let everybody know where they can catch up with you, man, on social media. Catch me on Twitter and Instagram at ASAPXO. Follow your boy. Thank you. Shout out to my guy, Preach. I'm Seven Mitchell, man. Follow us everywhere. Link is in the description. Definitely appreciate all the NBA junkies, man. Y'all stay safe. Enjoy the games. We'll be back at you guys in a couple days. It is back. It's the win for the Cross over on Giannis. And it's what's the foul.
All right, man. Peace to my NBA family. It's your host, Seven Mitchell, with the Best of Seven Sports Talk. I just wanted to take this time out to say thank you to each and every one of you guys for so much support for the podcast. I hope you guys are really enjoying some of the the outside-the-box angles we take, bringing you these NBA storylines. Please don't forget to like and share. Most importantly, rate the podcast. You can follow us on social media. All the links will be in the description. And if you would like to contribute to the Best of Seven Sports Talk platform, We have merchandise available, as well as links for the merch and donations will be all in the description. Once again, thank each and every one of you guys in the NBA community for supporting the show. This is Seven Mitchell with the Best of Seven Sports Talk. Let's talk some NBA action.